What's up, guys? Welcome to the Late Night AV Chat with Audioholics. We're joined with Gene and Donald Dunn. What's up, fellas? What's up, brother? How's it going? How's it going? So you want to come on tonight and uh, talk about some products of the year per Audioholics? Yeah, after Don like mutes the audio on his side, so I don't hear it in the background. <laughs> what? Somebody well, street, not... I hear I hear a delay with with sound in the background. Dude, you're always having to. It's not me. I'm hardwired and oh, okay. It was actually me. No, <laughs> it was, it was in. Uh, I was on a five hour there. Zoom meeting today, dude. Talk about marathon. Oh my god. Yeah, I finally hardwired my 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 PC, so shouldn't have any more issues. Nice. Before we before we get started, uh, why does it look like you have a porn stash? Oh, this. <laughs> um. <laughs> I have this thing when, when I'm not feeling good. I have this thing when, when I'm not feeling good. My wife won't kiss me, so I figure, why shave? She doesn't like kissing me when I'm when I don't shave, so I'll just let it grow and, and not worry if, about. If you that let that shit grow for a little bit, if you can, then she'll do anything you want. Trust me. She does not like facial hair, so no, yeah, whatever I, she. I, is. I mean, not true. not not you know adolescent stubble, but if you grow some real <laughs> facial hair, she'll mm. she'll love it, love it. Yeah, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna shave in a couple of days, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 on your channel before I do a video on our own channel to talk to talk to you guys about the product of the year awards. These are products that Audioholics reviewed. Um, Shane, I kind of consider you consider you part of Audioholics since you do reviews for us. I didn't ask you for any input on this on this video and a, and a on, brother. On, this, on this list. I apologize, what? but you only did like two reviews for us for the whole year. So, uh -huh. and I, I don't know if I like those speakers because they're a little bit bright. Three, three coming up. They're, they're, they're bright, just little a bright. little bit bright. How come I don't see anybody chatting on? I know your channel doesn't have much traffic, but man, there's like nobody oh, chatting in here. Damn. We had, oh, dude, what is up with you, man? This is Christmas time. Dude, I don't know, man. Shane's in a good mood. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he already started insulting my gear, you know, before we went on. So, oh, so, yeah. What is he insulting? No, seriously, uh, is it, are we live? Because it says like there's no chat going on right now. Strange. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we're live. And it says I'm not logged in. So I don't get that. <clears throat> chickity, chickity chat. Uh, hold on. 100 percent we're live right just like that he was gone gone did i turn the chat off let me see <clears throat> hey, dude, 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 there's some some troll on here <laughs> yeah, man i don't know I'll chat. Right. Hat hair. Look at this. Showing off the hair today. Hat hair. Oh, there's people. Buffering. Yeah, it is a little buffering, huh? What's up with that? Buffering. Hmm. Oh, it's like a buffering logo. Okay. Chat test. Check, check, check the mic. Okay. All right. So I was logged in so maybe that's what yeah there now i see everything that's weird so if you don't log in you don't get to see the comments i did not know that um apologize for that anyways i wanted to go over with you guys before i even do a video on our own channel the product of the year awards for audioholics for 2021 and don you know this was a hard year because of all the supply chain issues a lot of yeah supply chain it was really hard to get stuff to um to uh to test i see one of your chat person's name is knife nut i mean you're a Knife collector, a knife person? Or that ain't a knife. Of? It's not a knife. That's a knife. I design so, knives, by the way. We did at, we did actually manage to do a lot of speaker reviews, and I have to give a shout-out to James Larson. That guy is a machine, man. I can't keep up with the amount of reviews he does for us. I have about five that I haven't even published yet. So a lot of the picks on here are because of James's measurements and experience He's in amazing. reviews. Yeah. Um, I, of course, picked some of the electronics, and then we had Wade Robson, another awesome um, contributor to Audio Hawks. He's been with us for like 18 years. He did some of the um, the streaming stuff, you know, the streaming picks. So I don't know if do you want to share the article link, or do you want me to share my screen, or what? Yeah, go ahead, share your screen. All right, let's see how I do this. Together. Did you guys check out our THX uh, live stream today? I watched a portion of it. 
We had Tommy Lee Jones on, man. How could you miss that? He is I Tommy Lee. That. He is Tommy Lee. Did you mention that to him? I did. I said, do me a favor, <laughs> say, I don't care if you're innocent in your best Tommy Lee Jones voice. And he sounded like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but at least he looked like Tommy Lee. <clears throat> oh, that's the logo you wanted me to use. Okay. That's the logo. Yeah. <laughs> that's my brother right there. Knife nut. So, so on our homepage, audioholics.com, for those that still read, we do ha- we do this every year. We pick the best products that we reviewed or we have direct demo experience on, and we kind of do a rundown for you guys for the benefit of anyone wanting to know what we thought were the best products that stood out for 2021. And the first one would be this the best portable headphone DAC, and this is the THX Onyx. Shane, have you uh, had a chance to look at this one? I have not checked it out. I don't review headphone stuff. Not into that. Oh stuff. man, yeah. yeah, you're 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 too above that. Well, for us minions, <laughs> well, I want to take <laughs> that's true. For us minions, I want to take good sound on the go. This is about the best you can do. Um, yeah. It has their aurochromatic audio amplifier, the THX AAA. It's the same technology that's used in like the benchmark audio amp that has some of the best distortion measurements on the planet. Um, they really did a good job with this DAC, not only because it has really low distortion, it's got like 118 dB dynamic range, but it uses very low power. Mm-hmm. So you could plug it into your phone and it's not going to drain your battery. It's pretty much the best in the class. So if you're looking for um, to bypass the DAC that's in your phone and you want to drive your headphones better, it's, it's a pricey DAC. It's 200 bucks, but you know what? If you're an audiophile, it's a drop that's in the not bucket. It's not, it's not even... It costs less than the batteries in, in Shane's AudioQuest cables. That's not that's not expensive. Oh, always AudioQuest. Man, stop stop <laughs> bottom feeding, Gene. Come on, two hundred bucks. That's quite expensive. Well, I know someone. I know there's going to be some dude on ASR. I can get one that's forty nine dollars that measures three dB worse. If you can't hear the difference, you know, I looked at the sign ad results. <laughs> Oh, always with this in wow, is that his voice? That's a pretty good imitation. <laughs> That's sign ad. You got to look at the sign ad. Does it have Dolby Vision? It's no good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I jest. Didn't, so the next, was in our last stream together like five hours or some shit. Yeah, yeah we're like doing we're long. doing a short one. We're doing a yeah, short one tonight. I can't, that was a marathon. And Don's got to get up early and work, and I got to drive my daughter to school, and then come back and sleep. You know, I have a tough life. But anyway, yeah. yeah. He sleeps till six o'clock. Nobody has it easier than you, Shane. Let me tell you, I, and you're the envy of all. That's why I make fun of you so much because I want to be you. I want to emulate you. You go to sleep later than I do. I'm I'm messed up. I really am. So the next uh, category is the best streaming DAC slash amp. This ain't cheap. This is right in Shane's mm-hmm. category. This is right in his territory. I have the bigger right. version. Matter of fact. Oh, you do. Is it a Fo- Focal product? He's it is, product. yeah. So I yeah, have right. the Archie. I, I really like the Archie. Uh, and then they discontinued it. I guess they, the manufacturer couldn't make it for them anymore. So they came out with this is kind of a replacement. But the cool thing about this is you could use it as a high end streamer in your in your two channel <clears throat> system. It's not just limited yeah. to use as a headphone. Um, the name, name stuff is really dope. It sounds amazing. Yep. And it's got a good graphical cool. user interface on it, so yeah, that tops the dial for the volume. It, it's um, it's a really, really high quality. When you actually physically hold one, it it, it seems like it's worth the money. You know what I mean? I would right. say the runner. I would say the runner up to that would be the NAD M10. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. The, the yeah. NAD M10 um, is a great. That's a killer piece. Yeah. So, so I didn't include an NAD one because we haven't reviewed it, but I definitely want to check those out next year. I really like what yeah. NAD is doing. Mm-hmm. We need to get with them and get some gear from them. I, I bought the seven seven eight for my bedroom uh, system, and it's it's a pretty nice receiver. Again, yeah. it's a little quirky. Like we talk about the Japanese receivers. Yeah. Anything. It's. I mean, it sounds amazing. It's just a little quirky. Hangs up here and there. I mean, still evaluating it. Yeah, I gotcha. So next we jump up big time. Best AV processor. And I know Shane's going to say, well, that's number two next to the Trinon. You have the wrong picture there, buddy. I have the wrong picture. <laughs> I love it. It's a pretty nice piece, man. Don't. Oh, it's. Let me tell you, at first I was a little skeptical. Um, when I started bench testing it, there were some things that didn't measure well. And I, the cool thing about it is they're very proactive. Their software people made some adjust, adjustments. 
and the bench tests are really good now. There's a couple of areas I'd like to see improved, but next year they're rolling out a new DAC, which should make it, you know, on the level of what I'd expect for a product of this price. And again, we're talking about bench test results, not necessarily something that's audible. But what really blows me away about this processor, it has the most advanced base management and base routing I've ever seen, regardless of price, regardless of product. You can do all sorts of base management. You can run your speakers large. You can run LFE to them, which you can't do with a Japanese receiver or processor if you have a, a separate subwoofer channel. This allows you to do that. You could route base from a small speaker, let's say on your side of your wall to a sub that's local to that area. If you don't want to run it to your global subs, you can do that. And it's got digital output. So if you're running active speakers like I am, you don't have to do an unnecessary uh, analog to digital conversion and then back to analog because you've got digital outputs that go right into your external DSP to do all your FIR correction like we're doing with the RBH uh, SVTRS system. So that it skips an extra analog to digital conversion stage. And it's audibly, you can tell because the noise floor is super low. I can't hear any hissing out of any of the speakers, especially with my active speaker system. It's super clean. You can only do this with the Storm Audio or the Trinov Altitude. And these are both incredibly good products. And Shane, I will give you the nod that the Altitude has more field test. It's been out longer. So all the bugs have been kind of worked out more so than... They have been on the storm. Um, neither of them are perfect. You're always going to get some operational hiccups here or there. But, you know, it's it's the cool thing about these products is they're not products that you buy and then dump in four or five years. They're actually upgradable, unlike a lot of the other AV processors on the market. Mm -hmm. These guys are actually supporting upgrades going forward. And so is Trinov. So, I mean, both incredible pieces. And you have beyond 16 speakers on this. I could do... I could do 24 native and uh, virtualize up to 32 if I add more speakers channels. Um, so that's more than I would ever, ever use in my home theater personally. You can actually do two separate rooms with that. With yes. surround sound. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and you could do other zone audio. So if, if for example, Pretty I have sure six... nobody in the planet's ever going to use that feature, but it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if I want one cool thing I could do is I could create different speaker profiles. So if I want to just hear, I have six speakers in the ceiling for height. I could just turn all those on for background music. If I'm working in my theater room and just have that as its own zone. So I'm not getting distracted by having sound all around me, you know? So, I mean, there's, there's options like that. And, um, I just love, I love the, the up mixer adjustability on it. So it's got the, it's got the Dolby up mixer. It's got the Oromatic. It's got DTS X, which is garbage up mixer for two channel, but you have all the adjustability you can want ever to do the center spread, you know, the, the strength of the Oro up mixer. I mean, it's all at the fingertips it has an awesome web editor app. It's got a good, uh, how is that Oro up mixer? Would you say it's the best? No, I would say it's at best it's on par with Dolby. But to be honest with you, in my speaker layout, I've done the back and forth, and I think the Dolby up mixer sounds better on two channel music. Burn. I just it, it just the transients sound better to me. I don't know, Shane. You've probably experimented uh, with all the different up mixes. What do you think about up mixing Oro versus up mixing with Dolby? I've only used Oro a few times. I thought it sounded the most unnatural in my system. And I thought Dolby sounded the most natural. But lately, I've been using DTS-X because it supports all, you know, 32 channels. And Dolby doesn't. So if I want to use use my wides and my center surround, I got to go Dolby or dts -X. Oh, you're talking about when you're taking like 5.1 and up mixing. I'm talking about just two-channel, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't listened to really music in my theater. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's at most, then I'll listen. Yeah, to let it. me pre let me pre-qualify. Five point one up mix mm -hmm. with the DTS X up mixer is good. It's just they they don't have a good two channel up mixer because they don't have the ability to have a center spread. So everything gets dumped to the center channel, and you lose your stereo imaging with two channel up mix, and which sucks because the last generation of the uh, DTS up mixer was awesome. They had a separate music and movie <laughs> mode, and I I used that almost exclusively. I thought it was as good or better than Dolby Pro Logic Two X. So hopefully they fix that. I know, and I know that there's Kodak updates coming. I know Dolby has a Kodak update coming soon. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if DTS is doing that or not. DTS seems to be a little bit behind Dolby now. Well, they just did the Neural X Pro. Right. Yeah, yeah. true. 
Yeah. So Dolby's Dolby's got one coming out. We we're just talking about that the other day. Oh, okay. Yeah. And by the way, if you guys can't spend, I, I know it's a lot. Twenty four grand is is expensive, but Ooh. they also have yeah. Talk about me. It's Trinov Trinov price, but they have a sixteen channel, the ISP Core sixteen. So um, I think that's around eleven grand, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's a, it's a real bargain. Yeah. <laughs> it's <not. laughs> Well, it is for if you if you really want to get into all the configuration. You can't do the kind of configuration no, uh, in a Yamaha processor that you could do with these. And I love Yamaha. Is that uh, is yours IMAX enhanced? Um, I don't think it has the. It's it. There's a software update coming for it. Well, so you got to get that. Yeah, you need that buddy. I mean, like, how many things are you listening to on IMAX enhanced? They're so 2020 right now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would like to. I have IMAX enhanced on my Marantz, so I have an SR8015 in my family room. So a I solution can, looking for a problem. Exactly, yeah. So next up, we did uh, two-channel integrated amp. Um, I liked, I really liked the Denon PMA A110. It's like a fine piece of jewelry that sounds good. I mean, the thing is extremely well crafted. Mm -hmm. Rated at 80 watts a channel. The thing weighs like 40 or 50 pounds. I forgot how much it weighs, but it's it's built like a brick shed house and it's conservatively rated it doubles down and having load impedance and i i got 160 watts at four ohms both channels driven wow. i i was stable down to two ohms continuously and i got about 300 watts a channel dynamic what, what kind of ohms. amplifiers are in that it's a linear it's a good old-fashioned linear big power supply good output devices it never Double runs hot power, yeah. Yeah. I, I i drove the snot out of this amp uh with my revels with my paradigms and rebel, it just, rebel 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 yeah it's just the only thing it's missing mm -hmm. is a subwoofer output that's almost unforgivable but you know what when you're doing a pimp two channel mm -hmm. system you're probably going to run full range towers anyway with rels uh yeah and it has a really good Real DAC. It's got, the, it's got the uh, Burr Brown 1795 quad differential. That's what Denon used to do back in the day with the 5805 and those older receivers. Those were some of the best sounding DACs I ever heard. That same DAC is in this unit. So if you listen to SACD, well, you can't do it with this. You have to use the analog inputs because you can't transmit DSD through Toslink unless you use the USB DAC. And you run the SAD, SACD file off your computer, then you can do it. That's complicated. Very that complicated. A, yeah. And has a USB in? I forgot. It does, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to show you right there. It's actually a nice amp. It's beautiful. Oh, right. Yeah. It it's really is built well. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is the stupid thing the external pre in. What, who needs an external pre in? I'd rather have an external pre out. That's a shame. I would say uh, a runner-up to that would be the NAD M33 integrated. I'm sure that's a state-of-the-art piece because that has the Purify amp section in it. Mm -hmm. I would say it's at least as good as this, um, maybe better. And it's got the graphical interface. How much it's money cool, is that one? It's cool. At three grand, I think. Three, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah, three, I mean, that three, is five. definitely an alternative. I didn't review it, so I couldn't put it in here. I know you said you really liked it. And, um, and I don't doubt it because I know who designed that amplifier and that is state of the art right there. So it's really boils down to what do you want? Do you want kind of old fashioned audiophile class AB with a great phono pre preamp output? Or do you want, does the NAD have a preamp output for phono? I don't think it does, right? Uh, let me see. I'm looking at it right now. Mm, yeah, it does. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. But there are audio files that think you can't get good sound with Class D, and I hate to say that they're so wrong that they really should embrace the latest technology because I am sure that that Purify NAD amp sounds great. We picked it over that one in our little comparison. No, that, you did? That means anything. Yeah. I don't, I don't uh, discount that. I guarantee you that's a good amp. Well, the only thing that's missing is the cool blue lights like Macintosh has. It'll never be a Mac. <laughs> he's got mac in another room so we got a lot of speakers we that we covered been. we covered a lot of speakers this year um arendel uh -oh. or arendel uh oh there it is did you review these shane did you have the these versions or the six and a half version uh, what are you i got the big is that the big one yeah these are the eight inch. yeah they had, this, they had the smaller ones oh okay so these are thx ultra 2 yeah. or ultra certified these things are just 
a bargain. I mean, they are built really well. They've got good parts in there. They got a really good waveguide that actually works. So it gives good directivity matching between those woofers. The measurements on it are really good. Tons of output, incredible build quality. It's really hard to beat um, the Arendelle line. I mean, they're just killing it right now. And these are some really kick-ass speakers. And I think they're $2,400 shift, which is good because they weigh like 60 pounds, like 50 pounds. Yeah. Each, yeah, I think, 20... right? Are they a pair or each? I think it's like each, dude. They're well, pretty heavy. Uh, <clears throat> 2400 each. I mean, that's pretty No, bright. they're 2400 a pair. What are you talking yeah, about? Isn't that 2400 yeah. each? It says pair right there. Don't confuse me. God, you guys are killing me. They're 58 pounds you? each. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're big speakers, right, Shane? I mean, you had the Huge. six and a halfs, and those were big. Those are way bigger than I thought. The small ones are massive, yeah. Wait, the side of my body. I imagine what those were, how much bigger those would be. Well, you're only like 5'2", right? Six foot, come on. (laughs) Six foot, my butt. Mm -hmm. You know what new speakers look like that? Or is the uh, the new mono price? (laughs) I got in trouble saying that the other day, but yes, they do. (laughs) Very similar. (laughs) They do. And we're we're in the process of reviewing those as well. So, Yeah, I think there's like one review online. I forgot who who was by, though. Joey Tell, Joe and Tell has he just did a, a YouTube oh, video did? on him. Yeah. Was he's getting to the high end now? Yeah, that's 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 high end for sure. So the next one is the best budget tower. We reviewed these in 2020, but Ooh. I actually got these into my house um and put them in the family room. And in 2021, yeah, I did a YouTube video and really I good. Don tell tell them how this system sounds in my family room. Um way better than it has a right to i mean it's it's a great system you got good amplifiers on it yep. um the surrounds are f- fantastic you get the higher end paradigms and the you got the dual jail audio 13 inch subs in the wall yeah. <clears throat> that room and that room actually m- measures well it's just one of those things you can't plan out or you don't know with the furniture layout and everything that room measures extremely well it, it's an enjoyable system it's, we've listened to a lot of atmos music on it we've we've watched some movies on it it's 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 no slouch and those speakers are, are really not that big they're they're relatively small but they're yeah. beautiful i mean that is a great value paradigm really killed it with this with this series i mean i uh there's you'd have to be hard pressed to find a better speaker for less than half and, and to be honest with you it might be their most neutrally tonally neutral accurate speaker that they've made because if you look at the measurements on them they are very neutral and you listen to them and they don't have anything accentuated in them i know some of their older models like the the uh, prestige i always thought they were a little hot in the treble these things are just so neutral and that little center channel the 500c it looks small with that three and a half inch mid but that thing plays really loud really clean it's got great off access response the first six months I moved into this place, I did nothing but set this up with the Denon uh, integrated amp, and I just did two channel to my stero- to my uh, TV, and I watched like Hamilton with the family, and they all thought they all thought we were listening to surround sound because there was such an expansive soundstage coming out of just these small speakers, and yeah, we were really impressed. I mean, I just mm-hmm. I can't say enough good things about the speaker, even though it's not it doesn't have a fancy finish or anything. You're not paying for a it's finish. It's a beautiful paying- fitting on it. I mean, it's I, nice. I, yeah, yeah, I think it looks bigger. Good. What kind of tweeters are those? Um, I thought they were aluminum. I could be wrong. No, I thought they were soft. Them. They look it, but they let me see. We'll look right here. <coughs> I freaked. No, it is a XPAL. XPAL dome. So yeah, that is a. Um, I think that's aluminum. They have a yeah. beryllium one, don't they? They're higher. The personas. Oh yeah, the personas have mm-hmm. a beryllium for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a great speaker. Um, if anybody's on the fence about it, hey, you know, because it's a couple of years old, it doesn't matter. Good speakers don't outdate. So even though these are a few years old, they're still a relevant product in their price category. Mm-hmm. So next up, man, mm-hmm. this is something special right here. The mm-hmm. Paralyson 7S, mm-hmm. 7T, 7S, uh, S7T. THX yeah, Dominus, the first THX Dominus speaker. These things are just yeah, bad ass. And the build quality is, the pictures don't do them justice. When you see them in person, it's yeah. a whole different experience. They're they're a luxury product, trust me, through and through. But yeah, the, the dynamics on these speakers 
are second to none. I mean, they're not small speakers, but they're not SVTR size. But the the output, and the dynamics, I mean, they're really just amazing. It's that that kind of tweeter array thing that they've got going on that really yeah. and, and the drivers are super beefy. I was I was blown away by those speakers, to be honest with you. You got I me mean, that right now. Um, I'm actually getting a set. I'm getting a set. They're making a custom center channel of, to fit my cabinet in my uh, family room. So we're going to be bringing those in here and uh, calibrating the system and seeing, you know, just how much, how incredible it could sound in that room because that's a really good room. But James Larson basically said these are the best measuring and best sounding speakers he's ever reviewed. And he he's like, he's not one that showers compliments on anything. You know, he's kind of no, he's, pragmatic. He to say the least yeah he, yeah to, yeah he went great he went ape shit over these figures I he mean, did and everybody did that's reviewed them i mean <clears throat> uh aaron did a review and loved them or i think he did this the bookshelves but um mm -hmm. secrets of hi-fi gave him product of the year award as well so yeah, i mean they're, they're 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 phenomenal they're definitely a reference product in in all in all aspects <clears throat> their subwoofers are amazing yep yeah. So basically, if you want the very best passive loudspeaker that doesn't have active networks and stuff like that, this is about as good as you're going to get passively. And uh, you guys should be keeping an eye out on the channel because I will have a 5.1 channel review with Per Listen coming up soon. Oh, nice. What did you get? I got their, I got their bookshelves. Nice. The S5s. Nice. You got five of them? The new, the, the, in this series or their new? No, it's new series. series. This series here, S series. So, have you have you opened any of them up yet? No. That might be the most expensive speaker you've ever reviewed. No, no, no. You no. Sopras, yeah. Sopras, yeah. They're gonna have to deal with the Sopras. I'm curious if they're gonna be better sounding. Yeah, but you don't have the Sopras as a reference anymore, sadly. Yeah, no. That sucks. I mean, the Sopras are hard to beat, but <clears throat> these speakers. Listen, that tweeter array that they have just allows it to just play much louder than the conventional. Single, I thought I thought that speaker. was a I thought that was a mid tweet mid. It is, it yeah. is, but it, yeah, but it's it's higher crossover for the mids, obviously, because they're mm -hmm. only two inches. But the one thing you got to recognize or realize is that bookshelf's not going to have a lot of bass. They're yeah. designed to play with a subwoofer, so they're designed <laughs> to be THX dominus and to play of. When you want a speaker to have a lot of output and it's, <clears throat> and it's small like that, you got to sacrifice bass extension for sensitivity. Aren't they? Um, aren't they supposed to be capped at like eighty hertz for the THX spec? Well, the towers, go? the towers have an option to do that, but they'll they'll play in the mid twenties. But the bookshelves are, hmm. they probably don't have much output below eighty hertz. So you do have to use those with a sub. So don't go and review them and say, yeah, you know, I really like these speakers. They just didn't have a lot of bass. And I like a speaker with a lot of bass. And you I know, don't understand why I have to spend this much money on a speaker and get some bass. I need to get a subwoofer when I listen to these speakers. I don't think I've ever said that before. <laughs> a nice try, though. <laughs> you know, you know what's THX certified with a lot of bass? Are those Arundels? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they got dual eights in them, so yeah. Oh, you're talking about the towers? Which ones? No, the bookshelf. The ones I had. Which oh, I'm okay. assuming the ones that James reviewed, it's got to be even better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So speaking of bass, best powered subwoofer mm -hmm. now, your favorite mm -hmm. brand, the Monoprice Monolith 16 THX. <laughs> yeah, he said so derogatory. He said in such a Monoprice. derogatory manner. You, you like that better than the, um, than the um, Burleson? I wouldn't say that. We got sub of the year. I mean, yeah, I mean, but that's like a ten thousand dollar sub, and you know, we got to spread the love. We can't just have one company get all the awards. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this specific <clears throat> price category, I'm sure this is the best one. Yeah, for sure. And I'm and I'm um, I'm venturing to say this probably has more output than the D two fifteen. What the monoplace? Really? No way. Yeah, I think it might. I might have a little output edge. It just may not be as low distortion as the uh, D15, the D215. I got to look at the numbers. I'm hmm. sure somebody is looking at the charts right now and they can look at it, but this is a kick-ass sub. I mean, it's. I'm glad to see that they're finally putting a little cosmetic effort into their subs and it's not just a an Very little. box. Very little, but you're paying for performance, man. And this is the new one? Yeah. It's a beast. <clears throat> Thing weighs like 200 pounds, I'm guessing, right? Or 150, let me see. 180 pounds. 
Jeez. That's a bruiser. Going up against the SVS uh, 16. Um, I think James said that this beats the SVS in output. But it doesn't have an app. So, I mean, if you want the app and you want to have the PEQ functionality and you want free shipping both ways, if you don't like the <clears> sub, then obviously. That, that app's actually pretty cool. On this yeah. yeah, it is. I've got yeah. a pair of those SVS 3000s in my bedroom. It sounds good. I like the app. Yeah, I love the 3000s. Speaking of SVS for bed budget compact, so, well, this is not too compact because it's ported, but uh, even though they raised their prices, it's still a good deal. The PB1000 Pro, which is their ported version, still is certified to our large baseaholic room size rating. That's really wow. impressive. That's you go back yeah, five, that's what, 500 bucks, 600. So, like, go back six or seven years, you couldn't get a sub at this price that could meet our large baseaholic hmm. rating. And the sealed one meets our medium. So it's still pretty impressive for a small, you know, small subwoofer that's only 600 bucks shipped. Those yeah, are bro. both app controlled, right? <clears throat> yeah, all yeah, their app, subs yeah. are app. Yeah, yeah. Kudos to SVS for that. Yeah. that. They have an app to do that. Yeah. So is it, did you put this in two different tiers, price tiers? Yeah, it's more compact budget. Oh, okay. It's, Right versus, I mean, honestly, the pair listen should be there for the ultimate sub because it is. But I mean, this article is like was killing me writing this. It's long enough, and people that really are into pair listen will check out a review of their subwoofer and my video review. It's an audio file grade. Sub. You have a pair listen sub review. I will. Oh, then let me know. I'll I'll embed it in our in our article. This is, this is the twelves though, not the uh, not fifteen. That's all right. Yeah, S twelve. We'll right. I'll help you. I help. We're all one happy family here. We are actually. Yeah. Of course, we are one big happy fleet. <laughs> one big happy fleet. Jackson. Jackson. Cry so, havoc. <laughs> compact wireless speaker. These are really kick ass. Wade loved these. I didn't hear them. I know uh, oh, what Wade's is done. A, Rock steady. They have they have a portable powered subwoofer coming soon, and With you can hear all these speakers. You could do basically whole home audio. It's like a Sonos, but only better quality. It's got you know, mm -hmm. got a, like a, almost a one inch tweeter. It's got a real tweeter on them. Good output. Lots of battery life. Plays loud. I could put those in the back of my tactical vest when I train and just crank out the rock, man. That would be awesome, actually. That would be actually pretty cool. Damn. Yeah, and they're they're available on Amazon, so I mean they're, they're easy to get. Whether you buy them direct from the company or get them on Amazon, I'm looking forward to getting that little sub, man. That thing looks like a that thing looks awesome. It's got two passives in it, and I think that's like a five inch woofer, and the battery is supposed to last like 16 hours on it. What? Hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. So you could pair up four of those together for surround sound. You could pair, you could pair more than four. I don't know about I don't know about surround sound. You could definitely no. do a whole home audio. I don't think surround they have sound. they don't have a way to control surround sound. There's no control. Cool, take out in your patio or something. You know, hang out. So yeah. what was it? Just Bluetooth, or did they have any other compatibility with you know some of the different streaming? No, I think it's Bluetooth, but it's Bluetooth 5.0, which is really good. This is what kind of is this? Portable speaker. <clears throat> yep. Compact wireless speaker. Compact wireless speaker. I guess I should say portable. Is it just it's just Bluetooth, right? No Wi Fi? Right. I believe so, yeah. Now you gotta make me check. I wasn't expecting questions, you know. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's see. So it's got a twenty two millimeter tweeter, which is like three quarters of an inch, seventy millimeter woofer. Each each speaker has two passive uh, radiators too, so I mean they have decent output okay. just on their own. Sixty hertz base extension, Bluetooth five point oh. I don't think there's Wi Fi on them. No, yeah, these are just strictly Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. Portable. Yep, cheap too. I mean, he's talking one hundred and ten dollars a speaker. You know, too cheap for spare change for loose change. Loose change. <laughs> Focal, Focal oh, headphones. I feel I, I feel bad for Shane. 
It, Don has uh, focals. I have focals. Shane, why don't you have any focals? I don't. I don't care about headphones. I got some cheap eighty dollars headphones. Yeah, I honestly, I'm not a huge headphone person, but if I do want to listen, um, man, I love the Stel- the Stelia and the Clear. They sound amazing. Yeah. So these are the Clear they MG. Pretty. They are pretty. Clear MG, we have a review on them. Uh, Wade has pretty much reviewed all of the Focal headphones for us, and I think these are his favorite. Which ones? The most expensive ones? No, they're not the most expensive. Mine are the most expensive out of the ones we reviewed. Mine are yeah. closed back. Honestly, I think I would might prefer open back. because I, I like open like... back. Yeah. <clears throat> We're going to get a sample of the new Clear MGs here, and I want to compare them to the Clears. Did you pair them with the THX DAC? I don't have that DAC. I have the Focal Archie, yeah, which course. has its own DSP for this headphone. So you could dial in whatever headphone. You can't talk about the Archie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't talk about it. They didn't want me to talk about it because it's just, it's not, it's a discontinued product. And last but not least, you got to have a comfortable butt when you're watching movies, right? Valencia seating, huh? I enjoyed the hell out of these, man. This is kind of like when people come in our theater room, that's the first thing they notice is the chairs. Chocolate leather. And is that well? In the eight foot tower speakers. And the eight foot tower speakers. Yeah, they notice that too. But the same. Yeah, these are pimp, these are pimp chairs, man. You could fully customize these. The one thing I like the most is that they full recline and they reach my ankles. A lot of the home theater chairs, they're like too short, man. They only go, you know you know, six or eight inches up my leg and then my feet are hanging over and I hate that over time. They also have a extended version, but I don't think they offer the lumbar mm-hmm. support in the extended. So I got the regular version, which is still pretty generous. I mean, those must be tiny chairs. What are you, like 5'4", five, 5'5"? Five, five? Dude, these are good huge these chairs. They're Asian-sized. <laughs> Asian. Not 5'11", bitch. <laughs> Don's like 6'2", and he fits in these, and, he, you know, he likes They're them. comfortable. They're great. Yeah, the lumbar support's awesome. The headrest doesn't like block the surround sound. It's like contoured in a good way. Um, the build quality is great. Lots of storage. You got USB on there. You got a lot of different um, accessories you could put on. I have like a graphite carbon tray table. I've got a wine caddy holder. So I mean, it's pretty cool chairs. Yeah, they're like, they're they, they're actually very nice. They start at <clears throat> twenty two hundred bucks a pair. I mean, that's pretty cheap for. Uh, that's chairs. really cheap for a decent quality chair a lot of the chairs we sell are five to seven thousand dollars a piece right exactly oh, and these have a three-year pro rated warranty on them so that's you know you got a decent warranty as well Transport. you guys can also check out the uh black version of that review on my channel as well definitely let me stop sharing my screen. is that what you have in your your theater that's my living room oh living room okay. oh do you have the tuscany yeah you like them still? How many years? How long have you had them for? Maybe like eight months. That's about as long as I've had these. Yeah. I also have the um, the other ones. I forgot what they're called. The, the mohair. It's mohair. I have, I have the ones in my in my family room. They're like more of a formal couch, but I prefer the Tuscany to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, I don't care. super chat I don't here. Much. Bobby Digital. Hey, spare change. Did you switch out your BMWs for other Rubicon LCRs? I did not. Because they're they sent me the walnut finish. If they didn't send me the walnut ones, maybe I would have switched out. But I did not switch out the B and Dubs. Thanks for the super chat. Super chats are welcome. That's it. That's uh, that was the last product. Where's the chair? Yeah, yeah. That's I mean that's good enough. That's like twelve products. You know the interesting thing about that is out of the twelve products, is like four of them that are THX certified. So. You got to give your hats off to THX. They're back, man. They're making relevant product certifications of good stuff. And they What's are- up? So we got Perlison, which is THX. We got the oh, Rundles, which are THX. Yep. Mm-hmm. To my understanding, back in the day, you had to have a processor that could process their processing, like the decorrelation and all that. But I don't see processors with that. I mean, that's not, yeah. I mean, there are processors. The Onkyo receivers have the THX decorrelation, like Don is saying, and the yeah. re-equalization. I don't, yeah. I don't personally think the re-equalization is needed because they're doing separate mixes for home theater than what's in the theaters itself, and, and they, they already account for the brightness that are uh, from the original mixes. So 
when you go and you apply the THX re-equalization, it makes things sound mm -hmm. way too uh, lack of treble. You know, it just yeah. rolls off the hoss too much. Yep. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people hate it on THX, but they really built modern home theater. You can say what you want. They built modern cinemas, uh, the sound quality. I mean, Lucas, Tom Holman, the whole crew, you know, Gary Reistrom and all those those cats at, at Lucasfilm, man, they really brought home tech, you know, the theater sound, improved it, and then brought it to the home. And I'll always be grateful. My heart will always be with THX. I mean, some of the, the coolest systems I've ever heard back in the day were THX systems, M&Ks. Planet Snell. Technology, Snell. Yeah, I own I owned the Snell Music and Cinema Reference, which was one of the baddest to still today GHX systems ever built. So but you know I wonder I, if I the uh them. what if the dipoles are still a thing with them anymore or do they, they even, like do they were defending anymore? it? I was shocked. I asked them that yeah. question. I asked that Tommy Lee Jones guy, Stephen Martz. I love the guy, by the way. I'm just he's super him. cool, yeah. But I go, what do you guys think? Of, what are your views on dipole? And they're like, oh, well, well, they're still relevant depending on what kind of ambient field you want to create. I'm like, really? With discrete hmm. audio, you're still pushing dipole speakers? Yeah, because but if, no you, if you have ideal speaker positioning or if you can't get close, I mean, dipoles always really had a good ambient sound when they were deployed properly. I mean, surround should be ambient anyways. Yeah, I know. I just don't like. They don't give you enough focus for music, though. So if you're listening to yeah, that most music, no. yeah. The but, um, because I know some per listens, they don't have a dipole; they're no. just direct radiators. Yeah, but a Rundle's got the tripole, which is monopole in the front, and then dipoles on the sides. M and K. Yeah. Kind of that, See, yeah. As long as the woofers are in phase with each other, that's okay. I, the problem with dipoles is when you put those woofers out of phase, you lose sensitivity. So that speaker is not very efficient anymore when you're having the woofers out of phase with each other just to do that kind of breaking up of sound. I just don't think that's a good idea for home theater anymore. But there are people that want to have that dispersed feel that the that basically you can't localize that speaker. If you've got multiple rows of seats, I guess do it if you still feel happy about it. But I mean, even, even you know tool what doesn't tools against dipoles. What they're useful for stuff. too is back channels when you're against a wall. Hmm. You know, trying putting dipole speakers above your listening position on a back wall can yeah. can actually sound pretty good. So I mean, they they still have their place or use either that or a bipole. You know, yeah, that's a good point because I don't like having any. Yeah close to a speaker so if there's someone on a back wall i either tell them don't use any back channels at all or put them in the nope. ceiling just get them put away them in the ceiling yeah. but no they i mean you don't see many of them anymore but i think they still have some relevance in certain situations triad probably has some of those still right yeah actually they yeah. do i just we put some in at a client's house recently yep, yep. that's right yeah yeah which is uh which is better in your opinion, Dolby Cinema or IMAX? Oh, that was a movie question, movie theater question. I've never been to a Dolby Cinema. Oh, actually, no. Let's lie. I've been there once. Oh, the best demo, the best cinema I've ever been to is IMAX. Oh, yeah. Or no. Hands down. Hands down. Yeah. Expect in like an actual real dome IMAX. Mm -hmm. like right. Oh, one. yeah. That That's just an amazing experience. You ever been to Mosey, Don? Yeah, the many IMAX? times. That's what I'm talking about. Many, many, many times. I think they I mean, have Mosey, like, where they where they show in the base, you know, that where they do the demo before they play the movie, they backlight the speaker. I always thought that was pretty cool. I think they but, said they have like thirty thousand watts in that little dome. You kind of lean back. Like, well, you saw the room when you're in the waiting area, the yeah. projection system in the room. That to me, that's always going to be the real IMAX experience, not not you know what AMC calls IMAX. Mm -hmm. What about bipoles? I know Def Tech still uses bipoles. Yeah, I think bipoles yeah, are still good. Rolling. I mean, they're still good, um, especially if you have multiple rows of seats and you can't put two side channels on each side. Uh, you don't lose the sensitivity because the woofers are in phase, the tweeters are out of phase. You, you know what? They actually work good if you if you do a, a DT speaker that can be wired also as a bipole. So if you're doing, um, say, a 5.1.2 and you can't do multiple Atmos speakers, the, the bipole version will really spread that Atmos sound out around mm. the room very well if you angle them properly i've used those to great effect and they, they actually re work really well so you're talking about an in ceiling like a triad where yeah like like best? a clip or a, or a triad or whatever if you can wire them as a surround so that they're bipole they have dual tweeters on them so they point in 
directions. The whole idea behind a DT speaker is one speaker that'll play stereo. So if you have a big open area, you put several for sound reinforcement, you put several of those and they'll play left and right. So wherever you're at, you're getting a left and right signal, which really when deployed to effect works amazing. It sounds way better than even putting a high end set of left and right speakers because they're too far away to really get the stereo sound. However, most of those speakers actually have a setting where you can use them as surrounds and make them a bipole speaker. So we put them in the ceiling and we angle the tweeters so that they kind of, the sound kind of bounces out on Atmos and you hear it direct, but you also hear it ambient, which gives a little bit better effect for it. Um, more diffuse effect. Um, worked really, really well. Really, really well, actually, for mm. what it is. Cool. Yeah, I need to get some depth tech speakers in here. I've been waiting on their subs. They're 15. Yeah. But I guess they're like, you know, the whole shipping thing. Best One of the best subs I ever owned was a depth tech Trinity. It's a discontinued product, but it was about a 350 pound sub and it was amazing. That's when they made that. That's when they were big back then. Yeah. It had, um, six, six, 16 inch drivers in it, two active and four passive radiators with a ridiculously powerful amp. They actually built that to, they call it the Trinity cause they went, went into a, a, a cathedral in New York city and, and to play the pipe organs and they had like a 10, 10 of them or something. I mean, it, it's an amazing, it was an amazing sub. So when Def Tech wants to, they can make this badass products. I think this is the first year they came out with a, with their new 15 because they were doing those little super cubes for like ever. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know they had a 15 now. It's supposed yep. to be pretty good from what I hear. Yeah, I remember uh, back in the I remember back in the day, like in the 90s, I brought home a Def Tech 15 and sub at my parents' house and I put it in the corner and <laughs> We shook stuff off the walls. That was the first time I had a real sub in my house. This is back like it? when 5.1 just came out. I think it was the power field subwoofers, right? P PF 15? Maybe. I don't remember. The you were like number. high school, weren't you, or something? College, right when I was no, about graduating about college. Shane. Oh, Shane was like in diapers. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I recommend a set of DT80s. Good for not that impressed. Those are good ones. Those are good yeah. ones. Uh, well, any other questions here? Mm -mm -mm. Nice THX shirt. Pimping THX this, today. This shirt is is almost 20 years old, and it like looks brand new. So a testament to THX. They know how to pick the right like, shirt vendors. Like the rest of your wardrobe. Yeah. Don has one pair of shorts and the same shirt, <laughs> and he's, he's criticizing yeah. other people's wardrobes. Hey, I don't have to think about it in the morning. True. Obviously, you don't either. <laughs> I've been hearing about the Yamaha AVRs uh, clicking on and off. Is this true? Where Where is that? I don't see that in the chat. Oh, no, just chatter in the audio sphere. Haven't heard that. No, I haven't oh. turned my Yamaha on in a while. So I got, I'm actually writing up the test report. I'm hoping to publish it next week. It's going to be Are interesting. You? It's going to be mm. interesting. Mm. Yeah, plug in, I'm going to plug mine in tomorrow. Which one you got? Everybody, look, everybody's struggling right now, man. All these manufacturers are on the ropes, man. It's <clears> really <throat> tough right now. Yeah, so give everybody, you know, a, a little bit of a little bit of leeway. I mean, it's hard to get products right now. Bad. No, Usually, the difference. The difference is when I do measurements, I actually tell people, "Is this really a problem? Is it audible? Likely, it's not." As opposed to just doing a charade of measurements, saying, "Oh my God, it doesn't have 90 dB cyanide, so it's garbage. I can't recommend it." I don't do that. I'll actually show you and I'll tell you the practicality of the measurements. I think when he, he, I think he measured the trend off. I think he measured like maybe mediocre, slightly above medium, I think, for this and that. Mm. But then he like, didn't talk about the processing or how it sounded or anything like that. I was like, dude, like, where's the rest of the review? I was like, you just yeah. took like, one measurement. Would you, rather have, would you rather have a company that sends a product out to a reviewer? They test it, it tests like shit, then they just bash it, or maybe it tests like shit and they get back with the manufacturer and let them know it tests like shit and give them a chance to fix it and take care of it. I mean, to me, that's more productive. It takes longer, but yeah, that's that's just how I always operate. I always try to give manufacturers the benefit of the doubt, see if you can fix it before I release a test plan, and it, it usually works out. I mean, Yamaha's case, they can't really do anything with my measurements, but... With the case with Storm Audio, I got a 10 dB improvement in signal-to-noise ratio when I complained. 
I didn't publish the old data. I published the new data you didn't because that's relevant. You just pointed it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, how do you get those hooked up? You said XLRs, or is it through the uh, DB25? Uh, the front channels are the not DB25. It's a AES, whatever the standard is for digital outputs. It's it's XLR, but it's a digital output. But then all the other channels are analog. You could configure each channel as analog or digital. So my front threes are all digital, and everything else is analog. Through, can we talk? I'm sorry. Wait, through XLRs or RCAs? XLR. Oh, okay. I thought everything was just a one cable connection, like Dante. Can, no, can no, they don't the have Dante. Uh, Does Trinov have Dante? They I think do. they're coming out with an upgrade, like a new update board or something like that. Yeah. 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 So we get to talk about the new Maximus rating today. Can we talk about that? Uh, I haven't even, I mean, I mentioned it on our channel in the community tab, but we're coming out with a new baseaholic room size rating beyond extreme. Um, I we're going to call it the Donimus, but we thought we might get sued. So Yeah, we definitely would get sued by THX. And then I was thinking about calling it the, the Baseaholic Buster, and then Don's like, that's too feminine. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> Beast Buster. the Baseaholic Maximus. Are you not Maximus. entertained? Are you not entertained? Let me guess who's going to be on that list, the first one. Guess. Uh, start with an R or a J. <laughs> I'm sure JTR will have several subs that will meet it. Um, RBH is working on a specific sub in my per, room that's going to happen. Perlison might meet it. Really? Hmm. I got to look. I got to look at the. A, I want to make sure rate, it's a heavy rating, man. Yeah, it's I want to make sure it's not heavy. unrealistic. So it's what I'm looking at most likely is 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 a 4 dB increase in output below 30 hertz. And which is twice as loud at base frequencies. So that's hard to do because a lot of the subs that get the extreme rating barely make it down to 25 hertz. So you have to have something really special that'll hit that extra 4 dB down to at least 20, 25 hertz. And the uh, the Perlison didn't do that? Fine, I don't know. I haven't looked at the data. I, mm -hmm. I literally just came up with the concept and I, I knew for a couple of years we needed to have a new rating because... I mean, you can get a $2,500 SVS sub that'll meet the extreme rating, so it's time to <laughs> take, take it up a notch, you know, or a $2,000 SVS sub will meet the extreme. So, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Hey, knife, knife nut. There's one of my knife late nut. designs. Nice. The, the Paladin. Just showing off my, my heart and soul here. One of them. It's manly shit. You wouldn't understand you you gonna plug your uh, knife channel? I don't have a knife channel. <laughs> yeah, I saw. What was that channel you were on? Outdoorsman, oh, rifleman, tactical rifleman, the Green Beret. Uh huh. What? Yeah. Uh, wait. Oh, so um, you only had one uh, processor on there? Uh, yeah, because we didn't review. We uh, basically I didn't review I any other processors. More. I didn't review any receivers. I'm working on the Yamaha one. It's been hard to get those products. So it was like a slow year for electronics. Mm -hmm. Easy to get the speakers. Not so easy to get the electronics. True, what would you yeah. say out of all the I... processors or receivers you reviewed this year? What was your, I guess, what yeah. would be your pick? Yeah, I guess I didn't really re re review any processors. Right, that's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. And Don literally really just got the NAD like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so. this, the the... the receiver it's it, I'm, i like it you know it's it's a really great sounding receiver but it hangs up here and there it's a little quirky like most you know somebody i think knife nut was talking about a new emotiva processor for a grand i mean buy at your own risk man hmm. and you i hate to, unless you're in the trend off storm audio high-end high-end realm man it's you're you're you know some of that stuff can be quirky it just is I mean, if you don't mind playing around with it and rebooting and stuff like that, it's no big deal. But, you know, for the clients that I deal with, they need something to work all the time and be reliable. We and have control these, interface too. control. Yeah, and control it. Yeah, the drivers, the drivers for the NAD are not exactly perfect. Listen, I love the, the product. It's super cool. It really, for a receiver, man, that thing sounds amazing. It's probably the best sounding receiver from an audiophile standpoint that I've yet to own or be around. And that's a lot. It's it's a great product, but it's just a little, little quirky. Hmm. It's, it's, a, it's a little quirky. Didn't you get the uh, Ankyo in, 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 or Integra? 
No. Um, I didn't. No, uh, Mac got an Accio. He just got an Accio, but he's in the process of moving. So he's mm-hmm. Mac can't write any reviews, and Don's yet to finish a review. So did you see? Have you been to his house? His new house? Yeah. No, I haven't. Have you seen the pictures of his house? Who, Mac? Yes. Oh, yeah. I've he showed me. House. He's got. Wired these, yeah, yeah. He's got like his neighbors have like little one story ranches, and he's got this towering yeah, got, inferno of a house. He <laughs> looks like, like Minecraft. Like, yeah, it's like a uh, storage container. That. <laughs> no, it's actually a, a cool house. It's really yeah, it's cool. It's down in Sarasota, where he lives, is a pretty high end. It's probably one of the best parts of Florida. And I'm sure Gene would agree with me there. It's an amazing. Yeah. It's 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 an amazing place. But the trend now, and we're doing a lot of these transitional or contemporary style, very square, very clean spaces. And his house is really going to be great. Um, he he put a lot of effort into his theater room. We wired the house for him. We, he just bought a 77 OLED from me. Um, we've got Control 4 going in there. It's going to be a it's going to be a cool setup. I'm interested to see how it turns out. But Matt's got good taste. Yeah, I was I feel bad for him. I was like, dude, your neighbors got to hit you because that house got to be a nice oh, one for them. No, that room that he's yeah. in that he built, you're going to be able to stand out, dude. His door weighed like 500 pounds. It took yeah, like, it's like a three thousand dollar door. Yeah. yeah, like five. It's, I shit you not, 500 pounds, and they, like somebody got hurt bringing it up the stairs. Dang they it. It, they cracked the, the door frame or something. Yeah, it was crazy. His wow. floor floats. His yeah, floor his floor is like, is like suspended. Fishy. Like when yeah. you walk in it, it's it's mm-hmm. it's it's he re- it's it's like uh, the nut job room with the padding on the walls and shit. I mean, uh-huh. <laughs> nobody's gonna hear anything outside. Of it. Nothing of, of 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 relevance because he's got small kids. Um, and his wife will kick his ass. True. Damn. That sounds like an awesome one, Gene. Yeah. Matt knows the stuff. Uh, Matt, Matt, listen, I deal with Matt on a besides here on a professional level, and we've got projects that we're working on together. I refer him to a lot of my clients. I mean, the guy is just amazing. If anybody's wanting to do a theater room and and work on sound mitigation, room acoustics, room design, I, I just can't think of too many. I mean, he's up there with like a Grimani or a Keith mm-hmm. Yates. I mean, he's just really a brilliant guy. Are you getting those Gramani speakers? They want he wants to bring them down probably after Christmas, like after New Year's. Yeah, he he wants to bring them down. He wants to do a remote calibration here, and then come down and calibrate them and see how close he can get it remotely. Uh, I'm trying so, to get him to do it at Matt's house because I'm just kind of backlogged with product right now. So they're uh, they're powered, all of them. They're active. Yeah. So they would plug right into your uh, storm. Yeah. So wait, how's that work? You got uh is it individually out or are they like piggyback off each speaker? Like they string them on. I mean he's got their active amplifiers. I think they have a separate DSP, so you just plug the digital outs of your storm into or whatever process your processor or the storm. Those are the only two processors on the market that have digital outputs for speaker level. Um you just plug that into your DSP, and then the DSP goes into the amp, and you're off to the races. Hmm. Interesting. So, do you I think, think it's better? His amps, his amps might have DSP built in. I think. Yeah, Anthony knows his stuff, and his team knows their stuff. So, I'm I'm excited to hear him. So, is it better to have active speakers or passive ones? Oh, active all active. the way. Active. Yeah. Yeah. That's next level. Oh, if all, it's done right. Hands if down. it's done right, if it's done right, you can't just say, oh, an active speaker is always better than a passive mm-hmm. because then you got the Paralisten, which is state of the art passive, but you can take things to the next level if you get a speaker of that caliber and do an active. Huh. Okay. Wait, till, wait till you come down. I know, I know you like to pray to your cables and you get really into the cable nut stuff, but when you sit down in the primary seat, with an active speaker fully calibrated, you're not going to be thinking about cables anymore. When you hear that phantom center that's so strong in the in the middle of the room, right in front of you, because the speakers are perfectly matched, you've never heard a stronger phantom center than this. You're going to swear that the center channel's on when it's not, and just the clarity and and just the right yeah you got righteousness you of the sound. Here, man. I have to give Gene credit. That system in his theater room is, is as good as anything I've ever heard. I mean, it's just unlimited dynamics just clarity everything is balanced correctly the, the dynamics the nuances i mean they sound like a small pair of bookshelves in a lot of ways um they it, disappear it, yeah 
it's a really finely tuned room. I mean, he spent countless hours and Shane from RBH and, you know, various other and Matt Pose and various other people have all contributed to that. I mean, it really, truly is, is it's a, it's an experience listening to something on that room. I mean, he could use a little more bass, but they're fixing that. So, well, you know, people that need more bass tend to have be t- tend to be borderline personality disorder, from what I read. You know, the studies. So. What do you mean? <laughs> need more bass? You should see the bass curves in my room. It's, but he's right. I do need more bass, so I am at more, more bass. Scenario. Come on. <laughs> I thought those had four tens. We talk about Project X twelves from RBA twelves. The, the <clears throat> yeah, I don't see why we can't talk uh, about I, it. So I, very- so I told Shane, I said, you know what, Shane, I've got my 3 dB point in my room is about 17 or 16 hertz, something like that. And we had the JTR system in, which is, you know, even though the JTR subs roll off at around 25 hertz because they're a small sealed box, because they're sealed in a real room with all the amp power and the X max of that driver is like 36 millimeters or something like crazy like that. The hammer. I was getting single digit base extension in my room. And I told, I showed this to Shane. I'm like, we can't have this. We can't have an RBH <laughs> system rolling off in my room at 15 Hertz when I had another speaker that was rolling off at five Hertz. So he was quiet for a while. I didn't hear from him for like a couple hours or a but day. But he was or... burning on the inside. All of a sudden I get this diagram on my <laughs> phone. And I'm looking, I'm like, what is this? The monolith from 2001 space odyssey. I couldn't figure it out. He's got, at, at first he had this giant box with eight twelves in it in isobaric loading i'm like you're never going to be able to ship something like that that thing's going to weigh like 600 700 pounds at least please break it up into two boxes so now he's doing an isobaric loaded subwoofer with four twelves in each box and the advantage of isobaric is it gives you a low it, it allows you to play lower for the same cabinet volume but when you do an isobaric load, you don't get increased sensitivity or increased output. So if you do two sets of isobaric drivers in there, you'll have the same output of the 1212, which is which exceeds our extreme rating. But because it's isobaric, we're going to get that single digit base extension. So we're going to have output down to, you know, 10 hertz or below. And the two, you should see the tube on this thing. It's massive. So that's why when he said he was doing this, I'm like, you know what? It's time to up our baseaholic spec. If you're going to play that mm-hmm. kind of game, I'm going to make a harder spec to achieve. And that's how this whole baseaholic maximus came about. Mm-hmm. When is this going down? Uh, next year, early next year. Very interesting. So it's not going to it's not going to be a pretty sub. It's not going to look cool. It's it's really meant to be put behind something. It's a baffle wall or or yeah, in, in a professional installation. So but there's people who put them in their family room. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> you go on the JTR page, man. You got this beautiful room with like these gigantic, <laughs> monstrous amounts of speakers. But you know, I think it's cool shit. But hey, if your wife will let you, I mean. Well, those sound like they're going to be a little bit more svelte than the massive 18s, right? I mean, this should have a lot more output than that. It's not a fair comparison to a single 18. This would be like, this would be probably on the par with like the JTR ported dual 18s. Yeah. Something like that. Hmm. We'll see. see. It's an experiment right now. I want to see that one for sure. Hopefully, when are you coming down? When are you coming down to Florida? Uh, what month are we in right now? December. Well, definitely when it's warmer. Probably spring. We're gonna shoot, try to shoot. For yeah, spring. I would wait till like March, yeah. April. I mean, if you want to do swimming and stuff, maybe April, May. No, it's beautiful here right now. Like gorgeous. It's not yeah, swimming man. weather, but yeah, most seventies. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really nice. Freezing here. What's this? So, Gene. So only your. Front left and front right speakers are DSP controlled, or are all of your speakers? The front three speakers, the front left, right, and center. And the, the front left and right are tri amplified. The front center is bi amplified, and they're all DSP with FIR uh, correction. What's uh, like mine has that, but I have no idea how to use that. How do you, how do you go about doing that? Um, I don't filters. know. I, I don't know how to use it on the Trinov. I have no way. You have way more experience with the Trinov than I do. Oh, no. Yeah, like it, what's the Marani? The Marani has, you plug a microphone into it and you run it, you run your sweeps and it 
does the FIR calculations for you. And then you just accept. Hmm. You have to be really careful. You have to know what you're doing, to be honest with you. The best way to really do it is to measure the speaker outside, do the FIR correction without the interference of the room. Um, that usually works the best. So you got when I'm talking about putting the speaker outside, that means you got to put it up on a pole, a couple of, you know, about 10 feet in the air, get rid of any kind of reflections, measure it down to a couple of hundred hertz, all the way to 20 kilohertz, do your FIR correction, use that same filter on the left speaker as you use on the right speaker. So that way they're really well matched. And then just correct your bass below a couple of hundred hertz manually at the listening area. That's kind of the, the, the secret sauce that we found. It seems a bit more involved. It's very, me. it yeah. is. Yeah, it's way too involved. Um, I have not reviewed a Seymour projection screen, but I think Gene has one. I don't, yeah, actually. You know? I have a um, screen innovations, but I know Seymour. I know Matt, you see more. I've seen their stuff in the past. I know he's very... Uh, passionate about his product he doesn't like any vinyl screens his are fabric so supposedly they have a big advantage audio wise but it's it's debatable if the picture quality is as good as a vinyl wrap mm -hmm. yeah i've got a uh stewart fabric screen and i can say that i feel like vinyl gives a slightly sharper picture for sure mm -hmm. brighter, brighter as well hands down period yeah <laughs> not even debatable <laughs> Uh, although I'm, I think they, I haven't tried their perf screen. They got a perf one. I got a little uh, sample of it, and I could tell when I hold it up to the my fabric screen. I'm just, oh man, this one kind of looks better. Hmm. You gonna change it? I just got this one. Oh, yeah. I mean, it still looks good. Don't get me wrong. I think if I was sitting further back, then it might be less noticeable. Yeah. What projector are you running? Uh, Sony 325. I thought you had a JVC. Yeah, I heard the new JVC stuff. So sold it. Sold I sold it, it for the uh, JVC NZ9, but I'm not getting that until probably February, March. So Sony's holding me over for the time being. It's holding them over. That's a good projector. <laughs> what is that, like a $10,000 projector? $5,000. 5000 55 oh, okay. All right. It's a good projector. No good, yeah. Notice me dimmer than my NX7, though. Took a hint brightness. Hmm. Even the Epson kind of blows away for brightness. The Epson's super bright, man. I think yeah, that's a lot yeah. of light output. Yeah. Really bright. The only thing that annoys me about that is you have to have a separate setting for HD and SD. It doesn't automatically switch over like the JVC does. The Sony doesn't do that either. Annoys oh, me. really? Yeah. I don't understand why they can't do yeah. that. I don't know. Every time I watch something, I got to go back and forth. Because if not, it's in HDR mode, colors yeah. all out of whack. Yeah, I noticed that too. Like, uh, even on my TV or my projector, if you don't if you don't recalibrate uh, when you put on an HDR signal, all the colors are like blown out, like they're yep. super blown out, right? Mm -hmm. But it's hard to calibrate because you don't have separate test patterns to calibrate HD. Uh, that's something we should talk to with Jason Dunstall, Don, because I still I still struggle with that because it's really hard to find signals that you can use to calibrate to. Have He'll come on whenever we want. I mean, he's he's no. I want to have him here. I actually want to have him here and calibrate my displays. We should have we should have him on Change Channel too. A lot of people interested in video. The guy's a super freak. Yeah, I think he was at the TV shootout. He's a taller, yeah, he was. kind of slimmer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Man. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Is. <laughs> he's a uh, Joel Silver's protege. He teaches people all over the world how to be ISF calibrators. Mm -hmm. um he works for meridio which is part of av pro edge and he's just a really super cool dude he's a big audio huge audiophile um mm -hmm. definitely geeks out on stuff i mean he's you know he's one of my my heroes besides me besides you of course okay mm -hmm. all, right. All, right. Well, all right this is hour in let's wrap this up yeah we're done all, all right, right guys. So Next time we're going to have you on my channel, talk some shit and get you in trouble and put you on the spot kind of thing. Listen, I was drinking uh, Schweppes today, so Schweppes. We're, we're nice today. Nice, nice chatting tonight. I just had an edible, so it's okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Check out the link in the video description if you want to check out Gene's list on audioholics.com. He'll have a video on his channel as well. I'll have a Golden Ear subwoofer review up tomorrow. Per listen coming up probably a week after that, and we'll see you in the next one.